How expert! Top 10 Can Across Tips. How Expert publishes quick how to guides on all topics from A to Z by everyday experts. Visit howexpert.com to learn more. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more How Expert Top 10 videos in the future. Moving on, let's talk about the How Expert Top 10 Can Across Tips. Number 10. Make sure your dog is old enough for the level of exercise difficulty you're performing. Something many people do not take into consideration when starting to run can across with their dog is the age of the dog. It isn't good on your dog to run them for long distances or on tough terrain when they are puppies, as their joints have not fully developed yet, and it can cause joint issues when they get older. Start by taking your puppy for short walks each day and slowly start to build up their mileage. By five months old, you should be able to start short 30-second sprints throughout your walks. At six months, if you've built them up properly, you can start a slow one-mile jog with them. Pay attention to your dog. They will easily be able to tell you if you're pushing them too far too fast. Number nine, ensure you do the proper training for this activity, both you and your dog. Training to run a can across is crucial, both for you and for your dog. There are multiple Couch to 5K programs you can look into to help start both of you into running for longer distances. Also, for you, it is important to do some training runs alone before hooking up to your dog for can across, so you can build up your endurance and prepare for the sport, as when you run with your dog, you will be running harder and faster than when you're by yourself, so that extra endurance is important. Running isn't the only training that is important before you start to run can across either. You will also want to teach your dog all the commands they will need to know when you get out on the trail, so they will listen to you. Some of the most important commands will be hike, start running, on by, keep going. This is very important to keep them from stomping for every sound or scent they pick up. G, go right, haul, go left, and whoa, slow down or stop. Number 8. Trail running versus pavement running. What's the difference? A question that comes up a lot is whether you should run can across on pavement or trails. Both surfaces can work, although trails are definitely preferred when running with your dog. Pavement can be hard both on you and your dog's bones and joints and can cause physical issues down the road. You can still run or walk on pavement, but it's best to go slower and for shorter distances. For trail runs, once the stamina is built up properly, a dog can run for very long distances without having to worry as much about the wear and tear on their bodies. Number seven, what level of activity can you do in different weather slash temperature? Another big debate for running can across is what are you able to do in the different weather and temperatures? This can be slightly open for interpretation because each dog breed is different, i.e. a husky might have more trouble running in the summer than a lab would have, but the husky might handle running in the winter better than a lab would. Each individual dog is different as well, i.e. one husky might have a higher heat tolerance than another. And dogs from different climates will also be different, i.e. a husky living in Florida might have better heat tolerance than one who lives in Michigan. So, while there are certain temperatures most people won't run as hard over, it is up to you to pay attention to your dog to find out his or her limit. Weather is another story, and mainly depends on us to decide what we are willing to run in. Some people enjoy a run in the rain, and though you have to watch out for mud in this case, it can be a really fun activity for you and your dog, because you don't have to worry as much about temperature as long as it's not too cold. Same goes for snow. For a husky or northern breed, Running in the snow is their ideal climate usually, and it can be very fun to do. The main things weather-wise to look out for would be thunderstorms, hurricanes, and other more troubling weather. Number six, ensure you and your dog both have the proper nutrition and water amount. Nutrition and hydration are some of the most important things to ensure you have covered when doing any activity. Both for you and your dog, it is imperative to eat properly before, during, and after your runs, for your recovery and hydration is key to being able to run can across. Dogs won't need to stop for food fuel as often as we might have to, 
but if you start building up into longer runs, then they will need some form of nutrition. Mine love beef jerky. To make sure that they keep up their energy. Always make sure to carry water for both you and your dog for your run as well. I like to choose runs that will take me by bodies of water for my dog to drink out of. But that isn't always an option, so I always bring water with me still, just in case. Number 5. Build a strong bond with your dog. Building a strong bond with your dog is imperative to being able to run Canacross with them. You will be relying on your dog to listen to your commands, especially in situations where you or they might be hurt if they didn't listen to you. Running Canacross is a great way to strengthen and deepen your bond with your dog. But you want to start out with a very deep bond, so you know they will listen to you when it is necessary. Number 4. What gear will you and your dog need for Canacross? When running Canacross, you will want to make sure you have the proper gear for both you and your dog. You will want to get a hands-free running belt. This is a belt that goes around your waist. Some of them even have leg loops to help keep it in place so it doesn't move around when you're running. The next thing you will need is a bungee line to connect your belt to the dog's harness. This is a line that has some give in it so there isn't a hard tug when the dog pulls the line tight. The dog's harness is a very important piece of gear and there are many different varieties to choose from, the most common being the X-back harness, which is what you see most sled dogs wearing. The main thing to remember when it comes to the harness is you don't want a harness that restricts or changes their movement when running. So you don't want one that clips in the front of their chest or that puts any pressure on the front of their chest. Number three, remember safety at all times. Safety is always important when it comes to running, especially with your dog, but also since running season lines up with hunting season usually, it is important to be even more cautious than normal. Wear bright colors. Put a bell or something on your dog's harness so you'll be making noise to scare away wildlife and hopefully to warn hunters that you aren't a threat, etc. Choose trails that aren't known for being in a hunting area, though that doesn't always stop people. And if you're running alone, just you and your dog, carrying pepper spray is also a good idea in case you were to need it. Number two, make sure both you and your dog are in good health before starting Canacross. Find a vet familiar with Canacross or other dog sports and contact them about getting your dog a physical to ensure he or she is healthy and in good shape to be able to start running Canacross. You can also look for specialists for them so they can get routine checkups and even massages as you start your journey of running together. You will also want to make sure you're in top shape before starting Canacross. Build up your strength and stamina and watch how your body reacts to the difference of running with your dog versus running alone because it is both easier to run with them and more difficult at the same time and can be hard on your body, which is why health and proper gear are so important. Number one, most importantly, have fun. The biggest thing to know about running Canacross is to have fun. This is supposed to be a fun activity to help you and your dog build your bond and get your exercise at the same time. Don't be upset if your dog struggles to learn their commands or if they get distracted while out on the trail. Sit back and spend some time covering the basics again if need be. But always know they are having fun out there because you're spending time together. And that is what matters more than making sure every run is perfect. If you liked our video, be sure to click like and subscribe for more How Expert Top 10 videos on all topics from A to Z in the future. Also, let us know what other topics you want us to do a How Expert Top 10 video in the future in the comments below. Thank you, have an amazing day, and take care. How Expert publishes quick how-to guides on all topics from A to Z by everyday experts. Visit howexpert.com to learn more.